All right. All right, guys, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this, this time together. Um, thank you for the, for the saints who come out. And thank you for what we mean to each other and how we can encourage each other and learn together. I just pray this night that uh, we would be encouraged and strengthened to go into our week um, spiritually, uh, strengthened spiritually by, by your word. And uh, that it would, we would take it in, absorb it, and then live out of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so Romans 1. We tried, tried, tried to finish Romans 1 last week. We're unsuccessful. So we'll finish, Romans, we'll finish Romans 1 tonight and then get into, obviously, chapter 2. All right, so we left off about verse 27, right? We, uh, we talked about mm-hmm. when Paul goes into... Um, well, I'll, I'll just read 26 and 27 to uh, hit the ground running here. For this cause, and the cause is obviously the last you know, six, eight verses before that. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat, which was suitable, it was proper. Mm-hmm. And we did talk about how um, that's that's directly talking about homosexuality. It's it's referring back to a time um, in Genesis, leading up to Genesis, and Gen- including Genesis 11, when God gave up the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. We talked about how um, homosexuality. You see that last word in verse 26, against nature. It's uh, it's unnatural. Um, Verse 27 says it's unseemly. That means it's indecent. And we also read in first Corinthians six that it's entirely and 100 percent curable, just like drunkenness, just like a lot of other sins that's mentioned in first Corinthians six. And that's mentioned here at the end of uh, Romans one. just to reiterate, just so, you know, just to be clear, we do in no way believe that homosexuals are any less or more deserving of anything they get from God than, than heterosexual sinners. <laughs> um, it's just that uh, Paul deals with this particular sin because it is a particular issue, and he also deals with a lot of other sins as we go on in the chapter. Um, so, but we don't, don't need to go over that again, but you do read in 1 Corinthians 6 how some in the Cor- Corinthian church were homosexual. But then Paul says, such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified. So they came out of that lifestyle through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and the strength and the power of him living in them to bring them out of that lifestyle. Um, Just the same way he does with a drunk or a drug addict or, you know, anybody else. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, pick your poison. So, um, yeah, we went over that last week, and then so we can go into verse 28 tonight and, and onward. Even and, or, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You can see in that first phrase there, their will was active. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like they were, remember, um, they are not ignorant, uh, verse 21, yeah. because that when they knew, glo- knew God... They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. See, they they weren't ignorant. Um, Verse 19 and 20, we won't go over it again, but they had an inner witness. They had an inner understanding that there's a God. It's called their conscience. They're born with it. In fact, the conscience went into effect at the fall. Before that, man didn't need a conscience. But at at the fall in Genesis 3, conscience goes into effect. And man, even apart from the law, knows right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Gentiles who don't have the law, they know murder's wrong. How do they know that? Because of a conscience. So we're going to see farther on in chapter two how they're judged according to what they do know. And they know a lot more than we give them credit for knowing. Man is not ignorant that there's a God. Man is not ignorant of right and wrong. And and we probably won't get there tonight, but maybe next week we'll get into how the Gentiles who have not the law are going to be judged by God. Chapter two is all about God's judgment. Chapter one is about the demise of man. The ruin of man. Mm-hmm. Chapter two is about God's just judgment. And, and we'll get into that tonight. Um, verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God, what did he do? He gave them over. 
to a reprobate mind. Reprobate just means abandoned to sin. Completely given over to it. And again, just to repeat what I said last week. If you see people in the world who are just, they seem to live in wickedness without any, it doesn't seem like their conscience gets pricked at all. They just seem to just go on. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at, you're looking at what, you're looking at somebody who God just has given over. Mm -hmm. He's not, not worried about, I mean, they, they've rejected, you know, and they're, anyway. Um, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, not proper, not suitable to do. Being filled, so not just a little, but just filled their life up with this stuff. And look at this list. I mean, you won't read a list like this until we get to Second Timothy 3. Um, but being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication. Fornication doesn't mean, by the way, that the, the, the Greek word, it, it, it doesn't mean just one incident where you sleep with somebody who isn't your spouse. It means that repeated lifestyle of sexual sin it's just going back and back and back to it again um that's really what the word means in the old english and the um wickedness covetousness that's just greed maliciousness that you know you see the word malice in there that's just you know just wanting to hurt somebody badly full of envy murder debate always fighting about something right Deceit, so just liars. Mm -hmm. Malignity, that means deep malice, like like hate, like just rage, almost towards. Whisperers, like gossips, you know, talking about people all the time behind their back, stirring up trouble. Backbiters, backbiter. That's an odd word. That just means, you know, slandering the absent. They're not, they're, they're, they're not here, not here to defend themselves. And, and you just, you know, you're talking about it behind their back. You know, um, it's not fair. Uh, haters of God. Despiteful. It, you know, proud. How can you be proud when you're living that list? But they are mm -hmm. boasters. So they, they boast about something. Inventors of evil things. So they go out searching for new ways to do evil. They invent new ways to do evil. Mm -hmm. Wicked. Yeah. And then notice that next one. That's kind of odd. Disobedient to parents. In that list, you, you know, you look at that and you think, wow, I mean, that doesn't seem that bad. Disobedient that, that to parents. Be, that would mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. I can't get out of that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Disobedient to parents. Mm. Well, we'll just move right past that one. Yeah. <laughs> Does that end at some point when you become an adult? <laughs> yeah, because that's not like childlike behavior, all the stuff above that. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. that's, that's pretty. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. Then it goes to the, well, these guys should be away from their parents by the time they're doing this kind of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's there was, if I remember correctly, in, in Israel's Israel's law, there you, you could stone a child for repeated disobedience yeah. of parents. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could, I mean, literally... It's a very serious thing with God. I mean, just because what you're doing is re, you're 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 butting up against authority. Mm -hmm. it, it's 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 a rebellion. Mm -hmm. It's rebellion in your heart, and you're choosing it, and you don't have to do it, but you're choosing it, and 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 it's and it's it's coming against the structure of the home, the way that God has. That's right. You know, maybe from God, man, woman, kids. Yes. And then it goes out into society, and that's how why society's in the shape that it's in today because the home Satan attacks the home yeah. because if he can attack the home then he gets the culture and, and that's what's going on today yeah yeah the breakdown of the family God yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, you know when you when you look at uh, Genesis 1 to 11 there 1 to 1 to 9 you see what God did he's he implemented four structures for the stabilization of society for for any society to run under any type of it was first does volition. Man has to have free will. You have to be free to choose. The second is marriage. The third is family. And the fourth is the institution of government. Um, and and no matter where you are, what dispensation you're in, those things all are, are they're the cornerstones yeah. of what makes for a healthy society. And the yeah. family and marriage is right at the heart of it because that's the training ground for kids to go right. out into the world. And if right. parents don't train them, 
bring them up in the, you know, Paul talks about in Colossians and Ephesians, and, and uh, there's a lot of passages about that, uh, then, then they're not equipped to go live godly in the world, and then, you know, it's just, then they aren't equipped to teach their kids, and then, right. and you see that generational problem with Israel, right. too, right. in their history, so, yeah. um, I'm sure there's both to blame, uh, look at, look at that list of parents there, what they're doing, and then the kids are disobedient, yeah. <laughs> so, no they're, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, 31, without understanding, so they have no discernment, covenant breakers, without natural affection. You see, no, no, no just natural love for each other anymore. Everybody's hard to each other. Everybody's, you know, it's not just, hey, I'll help you out. I don't know you, but I'll just no natural love for. So like no altruism? Sure. Yeah. No, no love for your, just natural wanting well-being for your neighbor or your, right. the guy in the next to you in the grocery store or whatever. Just wow. natural affection. Uh, it's, it's, they don't have it. Implacable. That means like refusal to be peaceful. Just, mm. just won't do it. Um, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God. See, deep down they know they're accountable to a God. And that's what man tries to get out of his mind. That's what he's trying to push away. That's why evolutionists come up with that and they, they stick to it no matter what, even in contrary to evidence, is because if there's no God, there's no judgment and you become your own God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, that's what we just <laughs> look back at, you know, the heart of Romans 1 and, and that's what they're doing. They're getting rid of the judgment by getting rid of the judge. Mm -hmm. So, Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So not only are they doing it themselves, going whole hog wild into it, enjoying it or whatever. They also take pleasure in other people destroying their own lives and other people's lives in seeing them do it. Mm -hmm. And what you see there at the end of verse one is the absolute depths of sin. Enjoying. See, they have pleasure. Yeah. In other people doing what we just read, they look at it and they like that other people are doing it. And that's how that's how deplorable. That's how bad the human heart can get yeah. where you're just you're just taking pleasure in. Because, guys, don't forget what we're dealing with here. Sin kills. Sin destroys. That's what it does. That's the nature of it. That's why when Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned. I mean, death entered and death has gotten every single one of us. There's no way around it. Not only does it kill you in the end. It just destroys your soul. It just, you see people who have given themselves the sin. Their soul's about that big around. They're, there's no, there's no anything inside. They're just empty. No, they're void. They're yeah. void. Yes. Um, and that's what sin does. Yeah. It wrecks your body. It wrecks your relationships. It wrecks your mind. It wrecks your soul. It gives you no purpose. It leaves you empty. Right. That's the nature of it. And we're going to see in chapter two how God judges that. And he's, well, we'll get there. He says, knowing. Knowing. They know the judgment of God, that they that do the same things are worthy of death. Remember. I mean, just yeah. amazing right there. Look at the end of verse. You, God. Look at the end of verse 20. Yeah. Yeah. They are without. Excuse. Excuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. End of verse 20 there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, these aren't people who are, God help us. We're trying Right. I need help. I'm struggling. I got this sin. I, I just can't seem to quit. I need help. I, I I know that you're there and you you can help me or what I don't know whatever. But just if their heart was different towards God, right. but that's not what that's not what they're doing. Right. Right. Um, God's did, gonna help that. God's gonna help yeah. that man. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. Because start at verse 28. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Verse 32. Knowing the judgment of God. See, they're not ignorant. Mm -hmm. If they responded positively to the light that we saw way back in uh, verse 19 and 20, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God would give them more light and they could come out of that. But uh, verse 21, they, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain. But yada, 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 yada. You remember that? Yeah. It's, it's how they responded and then they wanted to get rid of God so that they could live in this mess mm -hmm. and have pleasure in others doing it as well. And this is just that overt, out there, obvious, I don't care, I'm just going to do whatever I want, uh, sin that you see um, out in the world. Um, 
That, that, that's what chapter one is. And, and Paul successfully, successfully in chapter one, condemns that individual, condemns the person who lives that way. Because remember what Paul's doing in chapters one through three. He's successfully condemning every section of society. Mm-hmm. He's going to condemn a, se- a separate section, a new section in chapter two. But in chapter one, it's this overt, just out there, you know, what we, you know, that list. And um, he proves, he proves that they're not um, ignorant. They're not ignorant. It seems like those that do that kind of stuff, more and more, they don't care, but they, they want everybody to just go along with it, Mm. you know? They, they demand yeah they demand that if you don't accept and approve even of their lifestyle right. that you're a bigot right yeah and you're racist and Something you know, what's wrong with you right yeah, yeah and that's where I get real upset yeah you know yeah. um Thank you. Right. no you don't get to do that to me right <laughs> yeah. you, you do not get to uh, do that to me uh, oh, are you sure it's yeah. just oh, yeah it's it's getting bad mm-hmm. with that it's, stuff it's to justify their actions that's why you're a bigot yeah is to justify what they're doing yeah. No, 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 no. You're, you're speak freely. No, yeah. you're right. Yeah. 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 Anything to just allow them to kill that conscience down more and more that everything they're doing is okay. And, you know, and, uh, Where's the verse that says, in the meanwhile, accusing or excusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Verse 15 of chapter two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 That's what they do. That, that, that conscious, that God given conscience, they accuse or excuse, you know, Right. And it's seared. Yeah, yeah, you can have a seared, seared, yeah. seared conscience. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, no feeling. Th- then that's why that, that's why you go deeper and deeper into sin because you initially, when you you just take, say, for example, uh, just I don't know, whatever, whatever, whatever the sin. Whatever the sin uh, just take alcohol, whatever. You drink a beer when you're a kid or something, and that's whoa, you know. And then as you get, you know, you drink every day, and a single beer is not anything. And you gotta, you know, you drink six, mm-hmm. and then you drink twelve. And then you got to drink hard liquor just to try to get to the point where you're happy with it or whatever. You just keep moving the line farther and farther. Same with sexual sin, same with perversion of all kinds, same with greed and money or the love of money. You just it, it, because the nature of the flesh is is a hog. It's never satisfied. Yeah, exactly. It drives. What, 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 there was a force. Yeah, there was a was it? I don't know if it was Rockefeller. One of the richest men in the world was interviewed one time and he said something like they asked him. Do you have enough? Like, how much is enough? And he said, just a little bit more. And, and that, that's it. That's the sin nature right oh, there. You yeah, just, and there you go. It's just never. No, it's never enough. Excess is not nearly enough. Excess that, that does not sound like a peaceful life to me. No. 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 Oh, that's a great point. I'm glad you said that. Because they, they would say that doing whatever you want in that sense, letting me drink a fifth of vodka every night or whatever, that's freedom. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, giving my, I'm doing whatever I want to do. Right. Yeah. That's not really putting them in bondage. And sleep exactly. Yeah. That's not freedom. Freedom is not having to do that which destroys you. And sin destroys. Right. Freedom is, a, is being able to say no right. to sin. Right. Because sin destroys. Right. And only Christ can do that. Right. Only Christ can. Right. Right. We can't change and help our inner man. Right. We cannot. Israel couldn't. Right. They failed under the law because they couldn't help themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. That's that's what the law does. It points us to the Savior. And so what can help me or what, what can save me from the bondage of self and from sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's freedom, because then I can walk and not destroy and hurt everybody around me, burn everything down and destroy myself. Right. You know, like the flesh tends to do. Right. That's, yeah. And that's freedom. Um, and and and. When you walk in the light, I can't wait till we get, I just, there's no section of the Bible that I've studied more, read more than Romans six through eight. And, and right. I can't wait to get there because it literally right. is the key to being free right. from yourself and from sin and from the law. And right. we'll get there eventually, of course, but, um, right. Right. that's what true freedom is. Right. That's what true freedom is. I agree. Um, <laughs> so yeah. All right. So there's chapter one. Um, wow! We How did many it. weeks was that? 
I don't know. Today's March 9th. <laughs> Three or four. Yeah. I'm just yeah. curious. You know, I'm just curious. That's too full. Did we miss yeah. a Sunday? We're going to rush through it, didn't you? would still be in verse one. Oh, <laughs> John would be halfway yeah. through maybe. You could take maybe. one word and that would be it for months. You know, the thing is, if, if you go too slow, you kind of lose the flow. Yes, right. Right. You do. Right. You do. Yeah. So there's, you know there's a, you got to find I, a balance. I totally, I, I 100% agree. And they talk about that when it comes to preaching. That's an issue with you know, when you take too long to get through a book, you kind of do lose the flow and kind of lose the, the, the church a little bit because you lose the flow. So you can lose their attentiveness. You know, yeah, and, because the writer of a book did have a purpose in writing exactly right, what he wrote. And right. if you're if you constantly go out, right. then you can tend to it, who does that balance perfectly. I don't know. Uh, certainly not me. Uh, no, but no. Uh, if you, look, here's the thing. If you want the flow, just read it yourself. Oh, absolutely. And then when you come to studies, then we, right. we take yeah. the rabbit trails or whatever. So. Right, right. Very good. Anyway. Very good. <coughs> oh, let me get you a pen. Oh, no. Here's one. Here's one. We can share one. We're good. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, I won't use it. I've got it. I don't want to use a pen. Okay. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't want to use a pen. That way you can erase, right? She's not being Joe. She's afraid to call her Bible. It's the edge of the Bible. Oh, no, she's doing inside her Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, All right. This is good. Oh, my God. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I use, I use I pencil for the yeah. same reason as <laughs> Alice is for years. I know. Pencil. Yeah. Pencil. pencil. I do pencil. I always use pencil of mine, too. Do you use the pen in yours? I use these deals. Uh, I like that, too. Those are the big ones. I know. Well, these don't bleed. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah, real they don't fine. Oh, really? Uh, they're real yeah. fine. Yeah. Actually, this one's the 05. This is the... I'm using like a... No, no, you want this one. You want this one. And is it a, it's a Sharpie, right? You want the no. 005. No. no. It, it, I got it's it. really sure. nice because you can... Try it. Just on one little... Yeah. Or here. Use it. Use it. See. Try there, it. it's okay. I'll have you. I'm very <laughs> comfortable with my well, pencil. They have them in here. Now, I'm like they inside mine right now. I'm having that paper with permanent ink on the Bible. That's cool. So they're for the Bible. You know, and you might be onto something because I swear... When I run out of room, I get so mad at myself because I, when I first got this Bible, I was an idiot and I used a, a normal pen and I wrote way too big right. yeah, and I took yeah. up way too much space with a comment I don't even need anymore right. Right. and now I can't fit a comment in that right. I could use now. So, uh oh, it's your Bible. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you start all over. Yeah. Yeah. Bible at all? Oh my gosh. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Hers, hers is. You, know, you guys high, all have. colored highlighters and, <laughs> and pen. And it's like you can't. Oh, and tape. oh it's like. I mean, and lines here and there. I mean, there. literally, <laughs> when you look at it, it's. it's, a, it's is it is it like just chaotic? She yeah. knows exactly. What okay, yeah. well, that's what matters. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 she does. That's the best. That's a new one. Remember? Wow. Who's this? Who's Toby? Yeah, Toby. Joe's Joe's sister. Oh, okay. She's in Hammett. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. She would come, okay. except she just doesn't want to go home to an empty home in Hammett at that time. Yeah. After the deal with my mom having me. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that well, makes I, sense. I understand. Yeah. So, and she might come on Sundays. Yes. So oh, that would she would. Oh, great. And then we can bring Sounds like she could teach. You, Paul, you're in the bigger <laughs> yeah. house. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> boy. They say a wore out Bible is a. What do they say? A wore out Bible is a. Something about a good life. I forget how that goes. Like a, a, like a wore out Bible means. Wait, how does that go? You guys remember that saying? No. Something about a healthy soul or something? Yeah, something like more. the more the Bible wore out the Bible, the more you wore out your Bible yeah. is, the better your Bible is. Yeah, we get what yeah. you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. forgot that. I wish I could remember what that saying was. Yeah. yeah. Homework and It'll come to you. I know. That's your assignment for next week. Yeah. Yeah. Really. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll check these yeah. <laughs> All right. So chapter two. So Paul certainly switched gears here uh, in chapter two. So um, in chapter one, we obviously had the gutter drunk and the, you know, all that list of guys and 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 all that junk you're, you're reading about there. And and, uh, and they don't care about their sin. They they don't care if you see it. If they if you don't see it, they're just out there in the world, just sin into the full. And in chapter two, what we're going to see is the man who who looks down on the man in chapter one, the man who holds himself as better than the man in chapter one and judges that man in chapter one. And Paul is going to systematically take that man apart in chapter two. But he's going to do a lot more than just that. Like I said earlier, chapter one is about the demise of man. Chapter two is about the judgment 
of God. And I want to I want to before we get into the verses, I just want to lay out kind of a an outline here um, so you can see that there's a progression of Paul's thinking. You can kind of lose it when you're just reading because this is kind of a thick section. But um, first of all, God has a predetermined set of standards. We, we already know ahead of time how God's going to judge man because it's written right here. OK, it's predetermined. God's judgment is and I'm going to name seven things. Number one. Verse two, it's according to truth. Verse two, it's according to truth. Hey, that saying, sin will keep you from this book, and this book will keep you from sin. It's very true. And a wore out Bible is usually a, a sign of a... a, a Anyway, I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, so it's a, number one, it's according to truth, verse two. Okay. Number two, it's according to accumulated guilt, verse four and five. It's according to accumulated guilt, verse four and five. Mm-hmm. I think there's two C's. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, how do you spell accumulated? A C C U M U L A T E D. Okay, so that's verse four and five. Yeah. Okay. It's according to a man's works. Verse six. What are you doing right now? Outlining chapter two? Yeah, uh, well, up until verse sixteen, because he kind of he kind of changes gears in verse seventeen to the Jew. Although it's debatable whether the first sixteen are about the Jew or not, but um, either way it works. Whether it's a Gentile or a Jew, it, it, the the point is the same about God's judgment because there's no respect of persons, which is my next point. Point number four: His judgment is without respect of persons. Verse eleven. Without respect of persons. Doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, black, white, woman, man, popular, lonely. Where's your pen like this? It's probably right there. No. You want one, Joe? Who's mine? No, that's okay. You sure? I had one earlier this week in my Bible, but uh, all right. Well, you can use this here. Okay. Go ahead. Number five. It's according to the light. That an individual has. Remember how earlier I was talking about man has that conscience. Mm-hmm. So man who doesn't have the law is going to be judged by what's in his conscience. So what verse would be? 13 through 15. 13 Sorry. 13 through 15? Yeah. So according to the light that he has. That he has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand what that means? The, the, the knowledge that he right. has. The, the, right. The, the, right. The, the knowledge, the, 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 the yeah, the yeah. I hear crickets. Yeah. Are, yeah. Well, you I hear frogs. frogs. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. Number six. The judgment, God's judgment is according to Paul's gospel, verse 16. And then number seven, last but not least, it, God's judgment reaches all the way to the secrets of men's hearts, verse 16 again. In other words, God doesn't just judge the physical acts. He judges, you know, what's in your heart. This well, verse 16. Number six. No, that's number seven. Six is according to my gospel. That's gospel. Number seven. They're both, they're they're both verse 16. Okay, they're both yeah, they're both okay, 16. Yeah, yeah. Both yeah. in the same, yeah, the same verse. And seven. Okay. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Okay. You got that? Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. All right, so so that's kind of just a general outline of these 16 verses here. 
Um, again, this chapter is about God's judgment and how one thing we have to know about God's judgment before we get into the procedures and, and how he's going to do this is that is it, it's right there in verse two. It's according to truth. What do we all want when we see a trial? We want justice. We want the truth mm -hmm. to prevail. Yeah. We want the judge to see the truth in the situation. We want the jury to see the truth in the situation so they can make a right judgment. It's like that. What's that picture with that? Uh, the, uh, the scale. The scale yeah. and her, she has a blindfold, blindfold on yeah. because it's blind justice. No, no partiality. Mm -hmm. we, and, 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 and we have to know that. We have to know that God is righteous, that he's just, and that he judges according to truth, that he will do the right thing. And that's got to be the foundation, the basis of all of, of this whole chapter, because God's judgment has to be right or else is he just whimsically going to, you know, pardon some guy that I mean, that's almost Calvinistic. Right. You know what I mean? You got, that's not what the Bible teaches. Um, so having said that, um, we can get into chapter two and spend a few minutes before we have to close. So. Okay, we just read chapter one, and then Paul goes into this man who, and let's look what he says here. Chapter two. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man. Notice it's an individual. Whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, like the guys in chapter one, mm -hmm. thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things hmm. so you see a self-righteousness here you see you see somebody who's condemning somebody else even though they do the same things you see a hypocrite right? you see a hypocrite mm -hmm. you see a self-righteous man yeah. and and you got to know that criticism of others is often just a crafty way to take the attention off yourself. Of, of covering up a guilty conscience. Yeah. You know, if you can deflect, Captain Deflecto, you know, and uh, you deflect onto somebody else, right. you can make them, you know, you can feel real real good about yourself all of a sudden because right. look at how bad they are. Right. And, and criticism of others without a true assessment of self, an objective, which it's very hard to be objective about self because we all tend to justify our sin. Right. I need that. You don't understand the stress I'm under. Right. Yeah. You don't know Sue, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what Joe goes through on a daily basis here. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> hey, easy. Easy. Take it easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, that, that's just the human nature. We, we criticize others to, to appease our own conscience, right. try to make others look bad and, lift, that is and lift ourselves up right. yeah. yeah, and justify it. And notice, again, the very end of the verse, we do it, he does the same things. The Lord Jesus Christ was very hard on a certain group of individuals back in his earthly ministry who often had this attitude. The Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Look, if you would, back at Luke chapter 18. <clears throat> In fact, these are the people who Christ, I mean, he just laid into them at times. Um, verse 10, 10 through 14. Uh, Christ speaking here. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The, uh, in case, sorry, if anybody doesn't, the Pharisees were the doctors of the law in Israel. They were the, they were the leaders of, in, in Israel, the, the, the spiritual leaders and the religious leaders, what did I say? The political and the religious leaders were the same. There was no, there, uh, they, political and religious were the same? Yeah, yeah. So, so it wasn't like our society where you'd have separation of church and state. Yeah, it wasn't like that with them. They, they had, Kind of like the, the Pope, kind of like the Rome used to be. Yeah. Kind of Similar. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 The, 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 the Catholic Church would have been. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so. time the Catholic Church, they were the government. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's a, that is a good example. And what is the public in? Uh, the tax collector. Right? A public in, is that a tax collector? I know it's just a, a uh, he's, he's not a. I think it is. 
I think, think it is. I, th I thought it was. It might be. Yeah, you might be right. I, I know he's a he's a just a normal. He's not a, a leader Susan, in this room. Like, okay, we're gonna I'm looking it up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Carrie's got it. But keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the key issue you'll, you'll see in a minute is, is what each man had in his heart. Right. Verse 11. The, remember, the doctor of the law, the, the religious leader in Israel, one of the, there was a number of Pharisees, but the religious leaders and the political leaders in Israel. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. They were public figures, basically. Oh, okay. They were, this is public contractors, right. often supplied Roman legions and military, managed collection of port duties, oversaw public building Just projects. So, of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see it in the word public. Right. And, yeah, right. that makes sense. Oh, this one says Jewish tax collector for ancient Romans. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I knew I got I, 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 I Nailed it, Mike. Yeah, I've heard that. I, I did, too. You yeah, have I've to, read yeah. that, heard that, uh -huh. you know what I mean? <clears throat> so we have two different definitions. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I thank you. They were hating. <laughs> Just doing his job. Yeah. <laughs> They were hated. Oh yeah, terrible. Because they like the they were seen as <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't admit you're working for the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I'm a uh, you know? I'm a like, like, <laughs> yeah. It helps when you take it. I mean, you know, nobody wants to, but when they're coming after you, we really don't like it. Yeah, right. Um, but notice how he says, I, I I thank God I'm not like this guy. And he names a bunch of the sins the dude does or he that he thinks he does. Verse twelve. I, he's speaking about himself now, the, the Pharisee. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. That man knew he needed a savior. Because mm -hmm. when he said, be merciful to me, he was saying, you know, in Israel's program, they had that mercy seat and where they, the, the priest would shed the blood for the sins. And, and he would say, God, remember that mercy seat when you think of me. You know, uh, you know I'm, I, I'm a sinner. I, I, you know, I've broken the law. I failed. And he's saying, God, you know, be merciful to me. He knew he needed God's mercy. He knew he needed more than his own self-righteousness. He didn't have any self-righteousness. And what, it, what was Christ's reaction Verse 14, I tell you, this man, that is the publican, went down to his house justified mm. rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. And what we see in Romans chapter 2 is the heart attitude of this Pharisee who says, look at those guys over there, those Roman one guys. Look at those fools. Look at those stinking fornicator and drunk and lying, cheating, stealing, jerks, you know, everything else under the sun. I'm so thankful I'm not like that. But instead of instead of the, what they should have done, number what's probably the, the case with these people is is they, they, they hide it better. They certainly have it in their heart, even if they don't do it as much overtly. And instead of thanking God and being humble about the fact that uh, maybe they have a better lot in life or whatever, whatever the elevated position they're looking down on, they get self-righteous in their heart. And God hates that. That's an ugly thing. So turn back to Romans 2. So would that be like, if we're looking at, um, are we talking about unsaved people? Or are we talking about, so like, I'm just thinking about like today, like some Christians who look down upon right. other Christians who say like right. or condemn certain sins as right. greater than others, right. but yet they're horrible gossipers right. and like. Right. Do you understand my question? Yes. What I'm saying? Yes. Well, I, I. What is the is this referring to? Just unsaved people, or is this referring to? Well, that's a that's an excellent question, and I think 
this is referring to unsaved because of what he goes into in verse four and five. But but the principle is certainly true of saved people. Remember, saved people have the flesh, just like unsaved people have the flesh. And you can choose to let your flesh dominate your life. And the flesh of a saved person is no better than the flesh of an unsaved person. So a saved person is fully capable of living just as self-righteously as an unsaved person. Right. Because their flesh is just as wicked. Remember, Christians, believers... Your flesh never improves. Right. It's just that you have a different resource out of which to live. Right. That's Christ in you. That's the Holy Spirit. But your flesh is... God never has an, a flesh improvement p- program. It's called death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's right. Romans 6. Yeah. It's, it's death to the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. You never, you never improve the flesh. You, what you do as a Christian... Is you say, I'm crucified with Christ. My flesh is no longer the issue. Right. I don't live out of that resource. I have a new resource out of which to live. And, and that, because Christ is still the only one who can live the Christian life. Right. Even in 2020, yeah. he's still the only one right. who can live the Christian life. In other words, you don't polish up that old guy. He's no, dead. He, he, you just, new... yeah, he's a vehicle. Right. And you learn to live out of a different resource. And you use the hands, the eyes, the ears, the mouth, the feet to serve God. Because again... When we get to Romans 6, the second half of Romans 6, the second half of Romans 6 teaches us that now that we understand the first half of Romans 6, that we're baptized into Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, Mm -hmm. now we can do something we never could do before. We can use this body to serve God. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, this body served self and and flesh and everything. It just lived according to the world. Mm -hmm. Now this body, because of different different resources inside, and because we've been, he who is dead is freed from sin. Mm -hmm. See, we're free. To no longer serve the flesh, now we can serve God. And that's what we get to do and not let flesh dominate our lives anymore. But you can choose to let the flesh dominate your life if you choose to do so. Mm-hmm. And a sa- what I'm saying, a roundabout way, is a saved person, his flesh is just as rotten as an unsaved and be, yeah. can be just as puffed up. Yeah. So certainly See, the I principle. Wanna, I, I want to comment on what she said too. Is, is you got to... Think of it like that Satan's policy of evil, like the the man that's holding the sign that says God hates fags. Well, that's gonna that's real loving. That's real. Yeah. That's yeah. the way to get the Christian message across. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. when, when we're yeah, and 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 to me, I've always thought that that is Satan's policy of evil for the world to look at Christians and say. Those people are pathetic, and I don't want nothing to do with that. Whether it's, it's something as serious as holding a, a sign in front of an abortion clinic, or God hates fags, or gossiping, whatever it may be, that is Satan's policy of evil to keep the world out, not so people don't want to have nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, God, God loves to judge them. To yeah, judge us. God loves the sinner; He hates the sin. Yeah, absolutely. and that's true of heteros mm-hmm. and homos yes. and. and Everybody in between. So, mm-hmm. and that, that should be our attitude as well. Absolutely. I, I have a note in this area that says an example of human good, mm-hmm. whereas in chapter one it was human evil. Mm-hmm. That's an, that big long list. And wow. So neither one of them right. are acceptable. So we're right. knocking them off. You know, start with the evil, which is obvious. Yes. Then you go on to the good people. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Knock them off people. their little pedestals. Yeah. Alice, yeah. that's an excellent yeah. point. Yeah. And thank yeah. you for bringing that up. Because remember, in the Garden of Eden, there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what we see, here's what's hard to, the Bible's not hard to understand, but here's something that we don't, that's hard to believe for us because we just have a hard time believing it. We know that God doesn't accept our human evil. We look at the list in Romans 1 and we we look at that and we say, okay, yeah, God's not okay with that stuff. But what we have a hard time, what our flesh hates is that he doesn't accept our human good either. The best of what we can do, God doesn't accept it. The reason is because he sees our heart and the flesh is only capable of being selfish. Right. We do human good to make ourselves feel good about ourselves, mm-hmm. to get puffed up about how good we are, right. to look good in front of others. Right. We have the motive of self, self, self right. and see only Christ in Nathan can be selfless truly from a motive standpoint. That's why marriage is... You know, We're, Christ is compatible yeah, in you. Christ yeah, is compatible yeah. in you. If you're two, if Christ is living in both, now you have a chance. <laughs> because yeah. otherwise, you're just, you know what I mean? It's kind of doomed from the beginning. But anyway. 
what was my point? My point is that... Alice had a good point. It's Alice's point. point. This is not my point. It's Alice's point. And she had an excellent point. Carrie's like, we got a new point now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's human. God doesn't accept the human good either. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well... You're on your own. Right? <laughs> yeah, because right, the guy in Romans, the guy in Romans two is that human good, yeah. or at least. But I mean, it does say he does the same things as the guy he's judging. So. But he thinks. He thinks. He, he lies to himself. He lies to himself. And thinks. I get pleasure in that. Yes, that's a great, yeah, great way to say it. Not as bad. Right. Right. <laughs> We're all good here, huh? Good to go. I didn't see a big argument. I, didn't know. I know who I am. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how are we good guys? I'm going to say I qualify. Yeah. yeah. That, that's good news. That's, that's good. good. Yeah. 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 Um, only the sick need a physician, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so so there you see him, his mindset there in verse one, and then in verse two he says, "But we are sure." So there's no there's no doubt here. We are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Commit what things? All those things up there. Well, and, chapter one. And as, I think especially chapter, chapter two, two, verse one, yeah. that mentality there, that hard attitude of self righteousness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. That last part does the same thing. Yeah, and uh, get get two passages, and then maybe we'll we'll. I I got notes all the way to verse sixteen. <laughs> I really had, was ambitious uh, with my notes, but uh, we'll be good for next time anyway. Um, We're in no hurry. Where are you going? Proverbs twenty seven and Genesis eighteen. Yeah. Proverbs twenty seven nineteen and Genesis eighteen <coughs> twenty five. All right, so Proverbs first. And this is going to match up with Romans 2 1. And then the Genesis passage will match up with Romans 2 2. And where are we starting first? Proverbs. Okay. So remember in Romans 2 1, it's the self righteous attitude looking down on the other man, thinking that you're better. Okay. Proverbs 27 19. Would you read that? Mm-hmm. As in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. All right, that might be a little hard on the surface to, to understand, but think about this. As in water, face answereth. When you look into a pond of still water, you're, the same exact face is looking right back at you. Exactly. It's like a mirror. Mm-hmm. It's like a mirror. They didn't have mirrors. That yeah. kind of was why they used that analogy. Yeah, pro- yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So, so, so the exact same thing is looking back at you. In the same way, notice the second half of the verse. So the heart of man to man. In other words, when you look down on it, when you look at another man who's sinning, you know what you're looking at? You're looking at, at yourself. You're looking at we're, we all come from Adam. Right. We all come from Adam and my heart is no, I am no better than the other man. He has maybe given himself to this or that, but what's in him is what's in me. Right. That Adamic nature right. is what I, in the same way, when I look in a mirror, I see the exact same face, heart to heart. We're right. the same. And, right. and, and in other words, be humble. Right. There's nothing in you that is right. better right. than somebody else spiritually. Except for Christ. Except, right. Well, right. Yes. Glory, that's right. It. Yeah. Right. Um, Absolutely. That's where you're better off. You have Christ. He might not. Yeah. He needs yeah. Christ. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. Um, and then in the Genesis passage, uh, this will match up with, well, not, when I say match, I just mean it goes along the theme of Romans 2, 2, when it says the judgment of God is according to truth. Back here, in Genesis 18, um, we won't read it because we don't have time, but Abraham is fixing to, well, God is fixing to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? And he does that in Genesis 19. 
But in 18 here, uh, because Moses had family in Sodom and Gomorrah, he had Lot over there, right? Mm -hmm. And his wife and, and their kids and stuff. And so, so when God tells Abraham that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham says, well, wait a minute, you know, are you going to destroy the righteous? Like, like Lot's not doing these things. And, and Moses has some serious questions. Remember, this is before he had any scripture. This is just, this is just, uh, he, he doesn't know all the character of God and he has to find out. He has to, he has, so he has questions. Um, look at verse 25. 1825. 1825. And this is, um, did I say Moses? I meant Abraham. Yeah, Abraham. Okay. Uh, Moses wrote Genesis, but, but Moses, yeah, wrote yeah. Genesis, Exodus. Yeah. yeah. So Abraham says, speaking uh, to God, that be far from. Oh, well, verse twenty-four. Well, verse twenty-three. And Abraham drew near and said, "Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked?" You see what he's asking there? He's like, God, you know, something didn't sit right well with Abraham if God was going to do that. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty-four. Uh, peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Mm -hmm. See, Abraham needed that question answered. Mm -hmm. Abraham needed to know that God would do right. And that's what that's the foundation of the judgment of God is that he'll do right. And it goes on to answer the question the rest of the chapter. I just came to this passage to say this is a major theme.